Six o'clock. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, we have minutes from May 2nd, 2022, January 10th, 2022, January 10th, 2022, uh, 2022, executive session and open session, July 12th, 2021, and April 12th, 2021. Has everyone had a chance to review these minutes? Mm hmm. And if so, would someone like to make a motion to accept them? All of them? Yeah. All of them? Well, we can do it That's in order. Right. Nope, we can do it in order. I'll make that motion. All right, someone <coughs> second? Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So Rick Shepard voted on voted. nay only. Nay only. Nay only? Okay. Uh, four mays. Do we have any four mays tonight? We do not. Oh, wow. It's all his I know. Right. I'll let Rick take a seat. So, so no four A's. No. Okay, we've got the Zoning Board of Appeals agenda. Does anyone have anything they want to discuss on that? Are the actual items included in our packet, or are they the same as last month? It's the same as last month because they um, weren't going to have a quorum, so they didn't meet. Okay. Oh, that's why just the... Uh, cover sheet <coughs> that's why there were no notices did you find out any more about the um, <coughs> sorry <coughs> the ice cream thing on center up street center up um, no just that they have a building permit for renovation okay. Sean do you know anything about that I'm sorry, Mary Lou's yeah no 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 the uh, oh. center on center app next to Spencer's that's on the oh. zoning board they're well, doing something with ice cream there oh they no vaguely I'm not representing the zoning board but I'm not really sure why he's going to the zoning board Mr. Anderson had a garage out back that uh, he had a prior tenant in who parked whatever truck it was in there and now he redid the garage the building permit and instead of the other tenant of the truck he has a ice cream truck parking there Ice cream truck parking? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So can we go and get pizza and then ice cream? No, it's not. Let's get to the important thing. It's just a different type of truck. And I, this is, I have, again, I do not represent it, but what I'm hearing is uh, there was a concern downstairs that it was a change of use, which I completely disagree with. It's a different truck. Um, but he was told apparently to go to the zoning board and get approved. That's all I know. And if I'm saying it wrong, if anyone wants to apologize, but that's all I know. Thank you. But it is not a retail sale of ice cream out of the garage in the back of the spending store. Well, that's too bad. Yeah. All right. So nothing further to discuss? All right. It being 605. Request to amend street drainage on Roslyn Street. Do we have anyone here? That's really Riley. Do what I apologize for not previously talking to the microphone. Um, Sean Riley, 500 Washington Street, representing Abington Investments, which is Glen the Point and Glen the Point Jr. The uh, older guy is Glen the Point. Um, <laughs> uh, this is just revisiting a previously approved two lot subdivision off of Spruce Street, which is known as Roslyn Street. And the only thing this is a request for was, uh, if you recall, this was a private way with some open drainage. It was going to be a swale along the side of the road, on the side where the new houses were going. Um, as they were actually constructing the road, the swale went the pretty much the entire length of the roadway. So. As it was, everything was coming into form and the foundations of the house and the driveways are going in, it just, it, they were looking to improve the aesthetics of it all. Um, because now they had a swale in the front yard of each house. So if, you, if a guest came by and didn't park in the driveway but parked in the street, they literally couldn't walk on the front lawn. They'd have to go around the swale and go up the driveway. So they asked their engineers to look at, can we eliminate the swale in front of the houses and just reconfigure the swale that is in the entranceway to the street? which is what the proposal is. Um, so instead of, I think, a two foot deep swale from between the street and the first lot, 
it's now a three foot deep swale. And the town's engineer has reviewed this and said there's been absolutely no negative impact to drainage. It still collects the water. We're adding a Cape Cod berm on that right side of that same side of the road, so any rainwater would be gu guided into the swale. So it still acts as efficiently as the previous design. It's just a lot more aesthetic. So now the end result is the two houses on Rossland Street just have front yards that extend all the way out to the street. But the drainage itself still works and that's been confirmed by our engineer and the town's engineer. So we're looking for the board to just vote to approve that minor revision to the uh, uh, subdivision, the approved subdivision plan so they can continue construction and upon completion, they will then submit the as-built subdivision <coughs> plan with this minor alteration caked into it. Board comments? Just want to, this is a prudent plan. So this was prior approval showing the swales. So is it, how, how's the water get, how's the water, I can understand, how's the water gathered down at the street point? It looks like it's water being gathered in front of the houses and brought underneath the driveway and then to the next house and then underneath the driveway? Yeah, um, what they've done was um, they, they pitched the road yeah. from the side to that side so all the neighbors on the other side, there's no water goes in. And right. It's pitched yeah. from here yeah. and, and here goes into the soil. Oh, okay. So what were these? What they, were they, these they, the drainage came right straight across here and they had no front yard. So, oh, so how are they catching the water? So now so just that, that's eliminated, that's eliminated, and it starts right here. Oh, right. This corner of that house right here goes in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that's where it was just to catch the water coming off the road. Oh, right. Right. I thought it was coming off the property. No. So I guess that's my question is the water that's coming off here to here, how is that being directed into here now? Yeah, uh, they chip, they, it's pitched this way yeah. and this way. So it goes past the south here and then everything goes into Yeah, I guess that's my concern is, is the water that's coming Cape Cod burn up it. here. Is this going to now run basically through these between the two houses back this no, way? No, it'll, it'll stay right on the road, whatever's there. It stays on the road. It'll stay on the road? Mm -hmm. Rick, previously, the side of the road that had the drainage swales did not have any berm. So the, 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 the water off the road would sheet right into the drainage swale. Right. There's now, where the drainage swales are coming out, Cape Cod berm will <laughs> now be installed. I understand, but the berms don't cover the driveways either. Right, it, it goes by the driveway. There's the drive well, no, so much, so I'm concerned about is that it's going to go down the driveways right, and into down the into driveway. the yards, into and the properties. It, by the pitch of the driveway, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the foundations are higher yeah. than the, um, the street, so it it won't go up the driveway. Pitch is back down. Yes, right. Right, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm just concerned, and I understand what our engineer said, is that, you know, if you start at the back end of the street, yep. all the rain there, it starts to go, you know, diagonally across. Yep. I'm, a, I'm concerned that it's going to go down either of those two driveways and then across the yards rather than into the swale. I'm not an engineer, but all I can say is our engineer and your engineer looked at it and... Yeah, they can't get out. They can't get out. Okay, so there's a bit lip or something there that prevents the water from coming up That's and over? Right. It'll, that's, I mean, it's going to actually go up, which, okay. where it goes up, it goes down the road. So catch the berm, the, the redirection of the next berm, and then keep on going. So okay. You open the berm up here. So make sure it, the, it doesn't go yeah. that way. That, that and, rate is actually higher. Than, so the rate in the yards, which I think would be where he was, it's coming across the yards. Oh, so the, the, the yard is actually higher, so the actually pitched out. So the grade of the driveway is a little bit higher than the grade of the, yeah. okay. So there'd be no grade for it to, Okay. <coughs> All right. Any yeah. other comments? Of course, we have a letter of reference that Rick had mentioned June 1st, uh, 2022, to the Planning Board regarding this project from David Johnson, Norwood Engineering. Recommendation We have reviewed the proposed changes with the design engineer as well as the documents referenced above and find that the proposed amendment is acceptable and may be approved. So, bearing that in mind, would someone like to make a motion to approve this, uh, you know, with mention of the June 1st letter? Yeah, I'll make that motion. Second? Second. Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Aye. Thank you. We'll make it sure it gets done. All right. <clears throat> going to move ahead a little bit. And uh, 6.15, well, it's 6.10, but... You want to wait till 6.15. We've got to wait till 6.15. So we're going to have a little bit of a break here. Um, 
the order discussed the Economic Development Council and the master plan goals. Mm -hmm. You can do that. Mm -hmm. So, in our meeting packet, we have uh, the master plan update from 2019 and uh, talks about uh, discussion of a development of an Economic Development Council and also discussion of master plan goals and discussion of amendments to multifamily zoning district law. So I know we got this ahead of time. As uh, folks have had a chance to review it, I'd like to get some discussion on this. Anyone want to talk about this at all? Well, did you because I was reading and I came across that where you talk this economic development concept. <clears throat> One thing that I, I mean, actually, what I notice out there, or what I've seen out there, is that when uh, unless you make phone calls and try to find people, um, you, you know, you have to you're building something, waiting for someone to discover you where your place is. The way these places have been filled. In other places, I know I have clients that get phone calls and things like this all the time. Is to some have someone actively might know somebody and make call, phone calls to someone that may I, see if they might be interested in coming. Try to uh, basically reaching out rather than waiting for people to come to them. So a committee, and I think it's, it mentions in there about being some of the uh, well being the uh, owners of the businesses being part of that. Um, I think they need a guide, but I think that I think that's what their strong input would be is being, using their connections to maybe reach out and somehow develop this into a something into something that um, well something we talked about maybe the, the uh, uh, town planner doing being able to reach out and reach out to people that might be interested in coming. But um, anyway, that's what I that's what I was thinking about that. Yeah. Abington had an Abington Business Council. I worked on that with district local technical assistance money when I was employed by the Old Colony Planning Council. And it sort of uh, went into hibernation. But, you know, you know, hearing what you just said, Jeff, uh, as far as having a town planner coordinate with that, you know, to get this thing going again. And also another thing that was done by Old Colony Planning Council, by me and others, was to create a guide to doing business within the town which is still on the town website, I believe. We're looking to update that. But yeah, because it was written several years ago. Yep, yep, there's just there's some information that's not up to date, and so we printed it, we're gonna go through it over the summer, update the information, and then get the, um, either have OCPC do a revised one, or have them send it to us in a format that we can do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. But we hope to have that done at the end of the summer and get the new one posted to the website. Yeah. Which I mean, the one that's currently there has actually got a ton of good information, mm -hmm. but some of the people, the staff, and some of the other stuff, not there anymore, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess my concern is it's nice to have that. I'm glad we did it, but there's no one doing the outbound marketing for the town. <clears throat> you know, it's, it's like, okay, we're open for business. Here we are. Just come find us, but I don't know. Uh, I feel like other towns might do a better job of making known what land or property is available for development in this town. Um, I'd like to know how other towns, or the towns that are doing it well, how they're doing it. I mean, Marlboro is just, they, they pour resources into marketing its town for development. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend going that way, but, um, you know, people say that there isn't any land left in Abington. Well, I mean, there's dozens and dozens of acres sitting up north of Route 18 that's underdeveloped. And you know that's what I like people to know about when they're trying to figure out where to start, where to build something. Um, you know, there there is land, and but just kind of waiting for someone to come by, I don't know if this is the best strategy. So, I would like to figure out more how other towns do that outreach, and kind of you know where do they advertise someplace? Do they, how do they promote it? So I actually did reach out to OCPC. Good. Um, and they would be willing to have a conversation with you guys, send somebody over. Um, the person I asked for, we're not sure if her grant funding, funding is getting, that she'll get renewed July 1st. Um, they have Donnie Fulginetti is the person you're talking that's, about. Yeah. But there's another person over there who is their economic development planner. Name escapes me at the moment. But uh, she would be an alternative to Dottie. Okay. You know, also in here, they talked about the redo 
I love acronyms, the Regional Economic Development Organization, that this would be done through Chris Cooney, you know, the Metro South Chamber of Commerce. And this is on, uh, what, the third from the last page on this. But it talks about uh, the redos of funded through the Mass Office of Business Development, partnerships between businesses, local government, and the state to provide <coughs> resources to grow and retain existing businesses. And uh, Metro South Chamber in Brockton has been designated as a redo, the area including Abington. Uh, Metro South Chamber has already reached out to the town, suggest a site or sites that could be appropriate for development. Town needs to work with the redo and others to identify specific sites and buildings for industrial and commercial uses and projects. So uh, it's a necessary prerequisite to identify land sites and or buildings that the community seems deems as appropriate development sites to purchase in 43D. Uh, so again, that's another resource that we could tap into. Metro South? Metro South Chamber, the redo, the Regional Economic Development District. And this was cited in the uh, most recent Old Colony Planning Council the sets, the most, which was okay. a couple of years ago. 2019, yeah. yeah. All right. That's so right. I'm waiting to hear about Dottie. If I can't, then I will go to Plan B. Jo Joanne Zegman. Jo okay. Yep. I'm working with Joanne on something else right now, too, so I can um, ask her if she'd be willing. But so maybe September, October? Mm hmm. Um, since we're not meeting in August and July, it might be quick to get that turned around. Does I'm sorry. I thought you were, I'm sorry. I thought That's you were okay. First. Does uh, South Shore Chamber of Commerce do anything like this, or are they focused mostly on housing? South Shore Chamber of Commerce does this, but uh, it's Abington's and brought in. Oh, it's in the, in the Metro yeah. South Metro South area yeah. in, in Metro South region. I was going to say they have Quincy and they have Quincy and Weymouth, Weymouth and things like that in Rockland. But I mean, they've worked in the past in Abington, but. Uh, Really, I think the focus is going to be on the Metro South Chamber. Right. So um, I can it, reach out to them and see who can attend. And if there's anyone here in the audience who wants to mention how they find out where there's available commercial parcels, I'd be interested to hear, too. I did. I, I, I will mention this, that when I worked at Old Colony, I did, for several communities, I created lists of available properties. And I don't want to add something that loses workload. But it is possible to, uh, you know, go on the town's assessors list, for example, and find vacant commercial, industrial properties, and things like that. And that's just something that I did working for Old Colony. But is that something that's used by developers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you put that list, Rick. You put that list on the town website, and you mention that you know that there is a list of available properties, and it's on the town website, so that could potentially be used by developers. I know uh, Stoughton has such a list, Town of Easton has such a list, if you want to look on their websites, and uh, I think Pembroke does too. I guess my concern is, um, you know, if I'm a larger commercial developer looking for, you know, 20 acres of land, I might not even think to check Abington. Mm -hmm. I just, it just might not even be on my radar. So is there a way to more put us out there so that someone says, wherever they look for these things, oh, Abington, never would have thought of that. 20 acres, Route 18, oh, let's yeah. go check it out. So, I mean, for right now, I can actually ask the assessors to prepare that yeah. type of list. I think they have the capacity to do that. And then I can have our social media coordinator put it out on social media. We can put it, we've set up um, on our webpage a separate, we separated, I think it was residents and business, but we separated, we now just have a separate business page. Mm -hmm. And we can put it up there, like the guide is there, um, social workforce, all that stuff, people who are looking for employees or all of that stuff, all of those links are there. Anything I get from the state goes there, and we could put this list up there. Okay. Um, and maybe put it under news on the website. I mean, I, I don't know how much more we can do without then start having to spend yeah, I mean, money take, we don't to, actually have right to, at this to, moment. To take an ad in the New England Business Journal, right. for example. But you know something, uh, if we did create such a list like this and it was on the town website, you know, we could go to the Metro South Chamber and have them publicize that too. And Metro South Chamber does a, does a profile of business guide and profile of communities. And if we created such a list, we could put that in the profile of the community, you know, that Abington has a list of available sites and properties. They come out with this every year. 
yep. since I've retired. I don't really look at it every year, but I know that this is something that they do prepare and do put out. And, you know, I could get a copy. I'm sure, you know, could contact the chamber and get a copy of this thing just to show everyone. All right. So I will take that. I'll have the assessors prepare that list if, if they can. I don't know why they couldn't. Mm -hmm. And then um, we'll get it on our website and on our social media. And then I'll um, reach out to the um, Brockton Chamber, well, the Metro South Chamber, and see how they can help us um, get that out there as well. So I think going forward, this might be a continuing item on the agenda. Yep. While we while we work on this, and Liz, if you could get that list of properties together, yep, that would be great. Yep. I think uh, part and parcel of that conversation as well as the supplement points out is um, many communities have experienced success uh, by employing a town planner with knowledge, expertise experience in business development, which I think is exactly what you're talking about, Rick. Somebody helps you make that connection yep. between what we have to offer and what they're looking for. Yep. So I, mean, I think that, the, that this conversation should uh, loop back to the notion of having a planner. Yep. But in the meantime, like I say, uh, just having this list of properties sure. would be a great step toward Absolutely. you know, making what's available and for development properties in town, and if we can get that publicized through the website, through social media, yeah. through the Metro South Chamber of Commerce. I know, you know, I worked with Chris Cooney for a long time, and I know it'd be great to work with okay. on this. Great, and if you guys have other ideas, I think baby stepping, like if, if we don't put a ton of stuff on my plate, I can do smaller projects, yep. um, added with some of the other stuff, like we're doing the hazard mitigation update right now, and so there's, we've, got our little project down here with the Exceders getting renovated so stuff like that is starting to happen we're going to do some stuff at Island Grove so um, but I am going to have tiny tiny little part-time help this summer so um, I can do other like I can have him do stuff and I can do other projects so if you've got stuff email me and I can email me email the board and get a feel for it and see if we can bang some stuff out this summer or at least if you have ideas that need funding that would qualify for CPA funding, they do their stuff in the fall. Am I correct? The application start mm -hmm. like October, November. Mm -hmm. um, so if that stuff is if, if what you're looking for, then we can start to look at CPA funding for projects and if that, like enhance, you know, any kind of town enhancements you think would be beneficial and stuff like that. Mr. Riley has a stand <clears throat> And I just kind of think based on my past experience with um, uh, some of the larger commercial developers who came into Abington, one of the folk, one of the things that they uh, valued was the fact that Abington is unique in that we have four state highways that cross through. Right. We have you know, 123, 139, 58, and 18. <coughs> um, that's why Yellow Freight came to Abington of all places, because they basically were in the middle of a hub of a wheel where they could kind of go out east, west, north, south. You know, we were very fortunate in Abington to have couple of national businesses, Lowe's, Target, uh, Walmart, which is unheard of for a lot of small towns. We're very fortunate. And yet at the same time, we have two small town district, uh, small town centers that we need to kind of treat those differently and help the small business, um, which is not an easy thing to do. So, you know, we all have to kind of work together to make this happen. Um, but it, I think the highway locations and obviously the intersections become very valuable to certain types of businesses who want that pass by traffic, whereas others can locate in a small downtown area. Um, but that, I just wanted to mention that, that that might be part of the, the sales technique on your website, that it, that might strike a chord with someone who's looking for that type of, you know, the, the four highways intersections. You could also get traffic information from Old Colony Planning Council as far as, you know, traffic counts and capacity, because right. traffic counts are always useful for businesses you know, for example, we know 18 has a really high traffic count, and so does 123. But as far as low, I mean, there was a reason why Lowe's located where they were, and Target and Walmart, and Stop and Shop, and even Wendy's, because these are high traffic locations. It screws over the, the North Abington centers and the Abington centers, unfortunately. But as far as, you know, the, the developable land that's available is primarily on the 123 and 18 corridors. So. Anyway, all right, any more? 
All right, good. It being 6.15, well, actually about 6.25, uh, site plan review, 657 Bedford Street. <coughs> Mr. Riley. Hey, uh, Sean Riley, 500 Washington Street, representing Tom and Jan Real Estate, LLC. With me tonight is Tom O'Connell, the principal of the LLC, and Dan Owig, the, the designer, uh, who's put together all the plans for us. Uh, this is regarding the property at 657 Bedford Street. To acclimate you, it is on Route 18, right next door to the medical and dentistry building on the corner of Shar Ave and um, Bedford Street, or Route 18, which is a state highway. Uh, that location. Um, there is currently a single family home on the property. It's 37,926 square feet, so just shy of an acre of, of land. And uh, it is in the highway commercial zoning district, and there is no wetlands on the property, and it's not in the local floodplain or anything like that. We're proposing to renovate the existing home, kind of keep the architecture. Some renovations have already started, uh, keep, keep our guys working and to construct an additional two unit building and additional in a three unit building to kind of match the architectural de detail. Every one of the dwellings will only be limited to two bedrooms. There'll be a garage parking space for each unit and a outdoor parking space for each unit. So each unit gets the two spaces. Um, and then there'll be additional parking, um, a total of 18 parking spaces uh, on the site, six guest parking spaces. Only 42% of the lot will actually have be covered by impervious surfaces, meaning buildings or pavement. So basically the majority of the property is covered by landscaping or green grass or trees. Everything in the plan conforms to all the setbacks, all the buildings conform to all the zoning setbacks. There'll be limited site lighting because it's just a residential use, so basically porch lighting. Um, there'll be a, a new cedar fence going up to replace the existing fencing. And the, you saw the detailed plan, the landscaping plan that Mr. Owick put together that calls for the planting of six maple trees, 33 arborvitaes, four columnar ginkgo trees, 43 shrubs being rhododendrons, hydrangeas. Um, so it'll be a well landscaped, kind of an attractive use on this property. There's currently no stormwater management on the property. So it has one, a new stormwater management has been designed to be put onto the property. So water will be better collected. And in fact, it will reduce the amount of water that naturally flows onto neighboring properties now, so that'll be an improvement regarding stormwater. Um, the, the questions, uh, one of the things we'd like to talk, the whole point of the site plan review meeting is to kind of get some feedback, and Mr. O'Connell is here to hear your feedback. Um, we know uh, that Norwood Engineering submitted a review letter, had some great commentary um, that we're trying to try to absorb, and I'm happy to see the fire department here, because we have, want to hear from them. This is, Step one of the process, we're not looking for approval tonight. Um, we're not expecting that. We want to kind of keep evolving this plan until it's something that Mr. O'Connell's happy with and the fire department and the board is happy with. Um, I have talked to the water department. Um, as you know, there was a moratorium in effect and they know, now have a new policy, which I just got a copy of and gave it to Dan today. It's 26 pages we're gonna go through, but um, there is a procedure now where um, new construction, you can basically pay a, a fee per unit or go save water with some, you basically have to meet with the water commissioners. Kind of like how the sewer board did it when they had the sewer moratorium, if you could save some sewer uh, or buy, pay into a, a fund that they could use to kind of improve the system, water department's doing something similar. These units, as the board may well be aware, a, a two unit condominium on average uses only about 100 gallons a day. For a single family house, they usually allocate roughly 250 gallons a day. So this is not a heavy water use. Uh, I don't think that's gonna be an issue at all. It's just basically either paying right, paying the fees that are now required, the fees have been increased, um, or if the water commissioners give us an idea or request to go fix an issue that they've been having, then we would invest in that repair or upgrade um, as they request. But that meeting will be held after we kind of move forward and get this plan uh, resolved, because we wanna know, we, we wanna show them the final plan. Um, this plan would also have to eventually go to the zoning board for the special permit for the residential use in the highway commercial. Um, there is single family houses right next to us abutting us on all sides with the exception of the medical building. So it's uh, ha having a residential use here is not kind of uncharacteristic. It, uh, there are a lot of residential uses right across the street is Harbor One Bank and the apartments 
you know, if you know on the corners, two of the corners on Shar Avenue are apartment complexes. Um, so this is certainly not out of the ordinary there. Um, and I think you'll be um, impressed with the work that Mr. O'Connell does, um, the quality and the amount of landscaping and the architecture that we put together. But as I said before, this is a work in progress. So um, I'm not gonna waste a lot of time with you. I'd rather hear from you and hear from the fire department if we don't, if we could. I know Dave Johnson from Norwood's not here, but we do have a copy of his letter. Um, some of the drainage things I was talking with Dan uh, are issues that he can easily address. And in fact, uh, some of the issues that were noted were really because of a, a misprint on the plan, which we'll correct. The soil test logs were from a different round of soil tests, so we'll update that and correct that. But that'll all be resubmitted to Norwood Engineering. Um, so it's a, it's an attractive style. Uh, it's uh, obviously a needed needed uh, housing in Abington. It's on Route 18, which can obviously handle the limited amount of traffic that this will create. But um, I would like to just kind of ask maybe we get the fire department or the board's um, feedback and we'll be glad to enjoy, have a little conversation tonight as to where you'd like us to proceed. All right. Board comments. Uh, Sean, could you uh, speak again to the work that's being done there now? What's the nature of that? Just basically, we he's trying to preserve the building. Now, we're not trying to get ahead of the game and assume that you're going to approve this plan and that's going to happen but what we would like to do is preserve that house it was in kind of rough shape so they're just basically redoing the envelope of the of the, the building putting up the new siding and everything it, uh, eventually as this progresses and we hope it will progress there'll be interior work done to kind of redo everything bring it all up to code and up, you know up to, it'll still be a two-bedroom house um, and all the other units will be two bedroom uh, that's as far as we're going right now uh, until we kind of see where this goes yeah this would the existing structure would become one of the... It would be a standalone. What we're proposing right now is the three buildings. So this is the house that you're asking yeah, about. Yeah. And then there would be two units next to it, detached from the house. I see. And then three units to the rear. This is Bedford Street here. Yeah. With the driveway coming in. This is the medical building on the corner of Shar Avenue. There's a single family house here, another one here. There's single family houses out here. Uh, this is uh, out on Washington Street. These are kind of rather long lots. Washington Street. Um, so that would be the proposal. Uh, the entrance here. We, we intentionally put the entrance away from the single family house and only towards the commercial user. I know Dave had a comment that you know, these are somewhat close, and they are. Um, but we thought that would be better than heaven over here. But again, it's where we want to hear your feedback because this is all on paper. So I need to change my paper, then it's your own paper. So uh, if you have. Uh, any, you know, things that really you don't want to proceed with, right, things you'd like us to consider as a test for all the years. So basically, it's just the driveway, the main driveway for this is going to be off of 18, right between the medical building and, and where, like where my eye doctor is right now, that, that medical building right there. But that's where the driveway will be, it will be between that, and there won't be a driveway off of 18. I mean, nope. turn around. Well, this is Route 18 here, yeah. heading towards Whitman in this direction. Shar Avenue is where my arm is. Mm -hmm. Here's the medical building. West Wheatley's building is over here. Mm -hmm. okay. Highway 1 is over here. This is a house with a driveway right now on yeah. Route 18. Yeah. That house would stay the same. And our question was, as we were discussing things, that we put our driveway over here, close to the single family, we put it over here. Close to, the medical. close to the medical building. Now, obviously, because of the location of the house, you know, we can only put it right there if you want to keep it away from the house. Mm -hmm. over here. As opposed to kind of right in the middle of the property, that kind of is, is hard to work with. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so we thought this was the better design. There's not going to be a lot of traffic with only six two-bedroom units. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think, and we're certainly not going to bother the medical facility. They they generate more traffic than we will. Uh, but we thought it'd be better than putting it down here. But and that's, that's why we're here, is to have a site review. So will the architecture of the existing house change? You want to talk, Tom? Or, yeah? Yeah. Dan Orwick. I'm one of the four people who've worked on these plans. Uh, my, I, I've been working on special permits for 30 years or so. Uh, my son Oliver is a registered architect, and he's did these plans and 
they're all to be cape, cape-like, gray, white, and black in color, you know, soft colors. Uh, we think it an attractive building. Uh, we had uh, uh, Neil Murphy do the surveying and PE and engineering, and we had uh, John Sullivan do the soil valuations, and he's also a PE. And uh, the if I can go through the existing site has water main and sewer here. These are the six test logs that we did. The only test log that we hit any water was models at 78 inches on number four. So the, the test logs that are shown in the pre, the plans that are coming up are incorrect. They were there were two sets of set test pits that were done two separate properties about a week apart, and somehow they got switched. Uh, so we've rectified that. Uh, this is this new vegetated area right here. There's a few, few trees, mainly pine. Uh, probably should be taken down. There is a few sheds in the garage. This is a summary of the of the site plan, and uh, we have end for 20 feet wide coming in at this point, and 20 feet wide going through the center. And we located here right next to the uh, uh, building that's uh, uh, to the north, being away from the residents to the south. Uh, we have shown our, our street lighting, four street lights, and then we're using the, the torches for lighting of each unit. Uh, we have three buffer areas, planting fence. There are two retaining walls here and here, both less than four feet. This is an option plan that we were. I called the fire chief this morning to see if I could talk to him about what his major concerns were. And we proposed our main entrance to be here 20 feet wide with the fire lane 90 feet long in the front, a stabilized uh, fire lane. And right now, you, you couldn't pull a fire truck in there because the grade slants. But in the grading here, we have a 1% grade here, and we can make this dead level, and we can even curb it. It depends on what the uh, fire chief wants. So that was our plan. I lived 30 years next to Howie Blanchard, who was a fire chief in Dexbury. So I'm sensitive to you know, the location of hydrants. Uh, this is an existing location. This is a proposed location. These are our two. Uh, location. So we were asking for the fire chief and, and his associates to make an input here. The alternative to that would be not having an entrance here next to the dental office, but at this point, and it can be 25 feet wide or wider if if, if somebody likes. But but it it comes in here and then. <coughs> dead ends here. It could have also an emergency access out here with a stabilized H20 loading access way. There could be grass. So you can see we have two plans right now and both have a fire lane out front. We think this is, this is an appropriate place for a fire truck or pumper uh, to be. Uh, our drainage, our drainage is, this is existing conditions and watersheds. I just want you to know that we, we have done a lot of analysis of this. This is the proposed condition. We're reducing the amount of uh, runoff that goes to the uh, dental office. There's two areas of detention, subservice detention areas. One that handles the roof runoff uh, here and all of the site drainage here, 
and then discharges through a waterway right here in the corner. Uh, this is the planting plan. Shows all the planting along three of the, the property lines as well as the interior planting. We're completely regrading the site so that it's much flatter. Right now it drops. We, we flatten this out. This is a 1% grade and this driveway in is a 2% grade. So we're talking, you know, minimal grades here. The other plans I want, this is, this is showing you that uh, the, the date was uh, December 7th or something here, or, or January 7th, and it should have been December 21st. That's why I knew, I, 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 I missed this, I didn't check that, but they put in the wrong, somebody put in the wrong soil logs here. So that's why the, the train was elevation kind of screwed up here. But it had, we have all the details of uh, what uh, Norwood Engineering would want. Uh, planting, cross sections, profiles, um, drainage details, uh, stormwater management, rotary control. Uh, and then we have, of course, architectural drawings Basement plan, I, I don't know whether you want to go through these or not. Basement, you know, these are 1,300 square foot units. First floor, second floor, and two bedrooms. And you, you've seen the architecture. That's kind of a summary. I hope this, okay. At this moment, I just want to take a pause and board comment. We have representatives from the fire department here. And if you'd like to speak, on the fire issues that were raised. One one question about what you're going to, is this going to be sprinkled? Are you going to yeah. sprinkle the buildings? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Chris Cody, Fire Prevention Captain, Evan Fire Department. Uh, we started these plans a little while ago. Um, obviously, our biggest concern is that it's tight. Um, per 527 CMR Chapter 18, we are going to request a vehicle swept path analysis. Um, if I get an email, I'll email you the specs of our trucks turning diagrams, turning radiuses, and we could just have your engineer do a swept path analysis. Um, our big concern, another big concern that we have right now too is the single vehicle parking per unit. Um, for us, for especially for two bedroom apartments, um, we'd be concerned about parking alongside the building, parking outside the garages or the spaces. Obviously if there's emergency somewhere in there, somebody's parked illegally, or even just in front of one of the units, that makes it very hard for us to get around. Um, already in this diagram, um, in order for us to get an ambulance into that <coughs> complex, we're not even talking about a tower truck. A tower truck almost guarantees not going to fit in this complex. Um, our engine and our ambulance both have to back all the way out um, in order to get out of this complex. Um, it's concerning for us. Um, I think that vehicle swept path analysis will show us more um, what we have for maneuvering room inside the complex. Uh, we do have the 20-foot driveway, which is the minimum code for us um, for fire department access. Obviously, um, that's curb to curb. Um, that gives us no extra squeeze um, for that. The hydrants we're okay with. Uh, we have plenty of access for the hydrants. Um, the fire lane in the front, that's good for us to pull up to the front, but with a second row of uh, the second building behind it, um, if there's a fire in that, there's not going to be any access to that back building. We're going to be stretching lines, significantly over stretches from Route 18 all the way back. So we would like to see access to that uh, middle driveway. Um, I haven't seen the alternative plans yet. It's the first time I've seen that, so we'd have to review that. Um, Close that one up for you. So I think we'd have to see the diagram. We'd have to sit down with the sure. chief and talk to them about it. Sure. <clears throat> so this is the, mm -hmm. the southern area. Yeah, so obviously 25 feet, we have a little more space. Um, again, just turning up in between the two complexes. This is our biggest concern in both plans, is making that swing into the two complexes. You put a vehicle um, anywhere in there, that's going to pretty much block our access into the, into the building, which makes us concerned. Um, so tonight I'll get an email for either yourself or somebody else. We'll get you the uh, vehicle specs um, for both our ambulance and for our engine. All right. Any questions for me? Um, any concern, you know, if there is a was to be a fire, with the buildings 20 feet apart, is that an issue or is there enough of a air gap to that is going to issue? Uh, it is going to be sprinkler buildings. So that does make us feel better. Um, hopefully the sprinklers can keep it in check. Um, it would be able to extinguish. 
Um, obviously, if it's fully involved, 20 feet, you're probably going to sustain damage to the other building. Um, I don't think it's either possible. We have buildings a lot closer than that in town. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we adopted a rule, I think, two years ago requiring when it's 12 units or more that there's 50 feet in between the residential yeah. buildings. So, um, this, I, I guess, I, this is one of my concerns is, are the, is that alleyway too close? We think the alleyway is really tight, and that's our biggest concern. Um, but like I said, with the buildings right on top of the alleyway, chances are you're going to have a guest or somebody parking in front of that building at some point. Yeah. We have that problem with some of the other properties in town that were made narrow, and now we're already having issues with it. I was actually, um, so not to get good. too far off topic, but there is one of the, the townhouse units off Center Ave where we built, you know, it's a driveway down and parking's in the back. Correct. But every time I drive by, they're parking in front of their units. Yep. And so I imagine there's no way you guys can get back there. And wonderful smart, we need to send a letter to them saying, hey guys, you are not allowed to park in front of your units. You need to park in the parking out back. That's yep. how I was built. And you're always going to have gas deliveries and a guarantee they're going to park there when there's an emergency going yep. on. It's almost predictable that when there's an emergency, somebody's going to be parking illegally in front of the building. So. Okay. Um, but I said, once we set vehicle swap path analysis, that will give us a lot better idea what we're dealing with and what we have for space, and then we can um, submit a letter with our concerns going on there. What do you do? The uh, turnaround time on that assessment, the letter? I, once we get the vehicle swap path analysis, I'm sure we can get it back on a couple of days. A couple of days? A couple of days, correct. We anticipate, because of the board schedule, you don't need an August. Um, you know, it, it, we. Very unlikely we'd be able to update this plan and submit it back to you within a week, which is what would be required for us to be on your July agenda. So most likely, much to Mr. O'Connell's dismay, I said, more likely we're going to be seeing you again in September. The benefit of that is we'll have plenty of time to have a couple of discussions and tweak things out. Um, and, and this is the beauty of site plan review, is the 20-foot driveway between the buildings conforms to the zoning code, and the parking actually exceeds the zoning code. But it's the reality that we need to hear from our fire department saying, yeah, even though 20 is what the code says, we prefer a little bit more. That'll all come out when we look at the, the swept analysis, the, you know, the size of the trucks and what they're looking for. We'll see what we can you know, wiggle with, use an expression that was in the letter. Um, so this is all helpful to us, and we'll try to help you as much as we can. I don't really have a question for you, but I guess it's with the part of the parking in there that uh, the existing building that's staying I didn't see any parking assigned for it, and, I, and the front entrance is still facing the street, but there's no place to. I was wondering what you're gonna, how you're going to deal with that existing building. See, that's the, the other plan right here. Yeah, there's, there's parking, these two, there's two right here for this. This is the guest parking. And e each one of these units has two, <coughs> two spaces. So the, the existing house doesn't have a garage. Yes. Built into it. So it has two spaces next to it dedicated. But in behind, we wanted to maintain a large front lawn. Yeah. Okay. So this is all, you know, where the trees is. It's, um, you go by and see grass and trees, and we don't see the buildings themselves. Um, this building, the house that exists there, has the two dedicated parking spaces reserved for that house only. Each of these units has a garage and a parking space that is outside of that central driveway. Oh, oh yeah. I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to let you go. I, yeah, no, I understood that. And actually, it wasn't, wasn't. I don't know why I wasn't thinking about when I saw it, when the existing house, I saw the additional park, and I thought, well, reasonably, that's probably enough if some somebody had a small party or something like that. And but unfortunately, it probably would be up in that driveway. Um, There's three extra spaces down here and three extra spaces up there with going on opposite ends. Right. Um, the minimum requirement for the entrance driveway and for this driveway um, is 20 feet. It can be, it says 20 to 30 feet in the zoning code. Yeah. While we're going to 24 or 25, you're just not getting people who want to park there. But we have, when you put it at 20 feet, if anyone parks there, they're inherently blocking everybody else. They learn, and we'll have signs here that you can't park in the entrance driveway. So keeping it at 20 helps us keep people from parking there. Mm -hmm. It's a curve. Right. It's a curve. Well, yeah, because I would imagine not knowing them, uh, I'd see the building empty next door and go park in their parking lot anyway. If I was visiting, if it was yeah, crowded, you know, I would. Super Bowl party? Or, yeah, it's a, well, uh, or a uh, birthday party. Yeah. Birthday party. <laughs> and it was, I just want to know one comment that um, Roman Engineering had made, that they were of the understanding that this 
was a minimum requirement of 25 feet. Um, I respectfully disagree because I think what they were looking at was the parking lot aisle is a minimum of 25 feet, but a driveway that leads to parking spaces is 20. Feet. Yeah. So as I said, this is all designed to code, but it's something that you know we probably will be revising before between now and then. Um, so going back to my original question, uh, the architecture that current building won't change. The, per, the architecture for the other buildings are a different style, generally speaking, though, however, correct? Yeah, but is there going to be any way to, that they get, they're tied together? We'll find more of that. At uh, our next meeting, I'd have my son here. He couldn't be here this okay. evening, but I'd have him address that and I'll have him look into that, see if the, if the roof can mimic that a little bit more. Cause it's, well, I, I kind of agree with what you're saying. It, actually, the new architecture is nice i'm looking yeah. at it going oh is this just model generating this because framing these roofs like that is tough but um the big overhangs i mean that's what really makes the new architecture so it's got these huge overhangs and you look at the shadow that he put on the drawing to, to indicate how deep it is um nice but like you mentioned it's completely different from the house which has got no overhangs and it's a it's, it's a cambrel um you know it's just it's just a different architecture but i just i guess i think it's a reasonable to look at how to okay we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at yeah that. i mean yeah, the, the units that. itself are, are nice Pardon? and the units themselves are nice it's just it's yes. a weird uh conflict i think what's it's mainly there. the roof if, if yeah the, the roof, roof lines if the roof can mimic awkward. the existing house a little bit more i think that would that would work um i guess there's also a weird thing where is there is the current structure going to continue to be a single family or one per one family in that so does, this doesn't make it a single well, family two plus bed, two bedroom. So it's still a two bedroom. One one family would yeah. be in that. Yeah. Does this? Well, yeah, because then now you're putting a single family with a multi-family. So I don't know if that raises any weird loopholes. It would just be it has to be in the traditional it's part of a I'm sorry. So it would just be a, right. Oh. It's part of a condominium association. You could actually have oh, four, true. five, six single units as a condominium. Okay. Um, or Two you know, two unit buildings, three yep. what it can be any blend. The only thing with a, with a condominium is is basically shared responsibility to maintain the common areas private. Um, so in this proposal as drafted is the one unit building, the two unit building, and the three unit building. Um, that would all be the same one condominium association. So that the town does no plowing, the town does no maintenance, this is a private property. They maintain it like any other condominium, most of them are larger. But so these units seem to be very similar to part of the development at the air station. There's a section of it where you have this sort of, I don't mean alleyway, but it's an alleyway, uh, common access, access is off this, you know, 20 foot wide. Um, and then the, it's really the rear of the how units. And then the front of it is someplace else and there's more green space in, in front of it. Um, I don't know if anybody has seen them. It's an interesting concept, I, I kind of, it makes sense when it's part of that larger development. I don't. It's not striking me right, personally, uh, for this sort of one-off experience. Um, we had similar discussions, and that's why again we wanted. Mr. O'Connell was big about the landscaping. Yeah. He wanted it that what's it going to be the streetscape to look like, and that's why the you know you get four, a forty-foot deep front yeah. yard <clears throat> with trees and landscaping. You'll see the facade of this house, and effectively this other building blocks your view along with the trees of the building behind. Yep. So you would come down Route 18 and see grass, and essentially a single family, and then yeah. a two family next to it. I mean, that, that one of my questions is, is the elevations for the <clears throat> Bedford Street view in the packet. I wasn't sure if I was looking at the right thing or not. That was more of the, the, of the this one right here? Is the more of the view of that driveway between the building? No, that's what I'm looking for is, is, is are one of these, does one of these pages contain the elevations if I'm standing on Bedford Street looking at it? No, it does, okay. it does not. It, it, those are the, the elevation of the architecture yeah. are of, of the, the two and four unit buildings. You can try to develop that with September. Yeah, it's, I just, well, I think that's I, what's one of my kind of stickler points is, all right, how is this going to look from Bedford Street? Because I'm, I'm going to be the one that's driving by it every day for the next 40 years. So. Yeah, me too. I agree yeah. with you. And, you know, the, 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 here's the, the roof plan, what you're, you're commenting about, yeah. you know, maybe we can mimic this more like the existing house. I think one of the things we mentioned, we, he and I have talked about, the, I don't need to yep. is that 
the back of the building is facing Route 18. Um, and that's where it kind of, I mean, the front of the building is a nice way and they're all facing each other, yeah. but the back yeah. of the building is facing Route 18. We, well, we've had a lot of complexes <coughs> that kind of show their rear ends to us, which is, isn't very pleasant. And, you know, <coughs> the gas, all the gas wanted, everything you don't want to see behind the building is facing the street. So I just want to know how you, that streetscape is, it looks. Well, we'll do, we'll do an analysis of that view, but with the landscaping, and you have to realize that's where the 40 feet of yard is. Yeah. And so the outside space is important to the inside space of the house. Sure. Of the residence. Yeah. So uh, but th these elevations, you know, th this is in, in the, the driveway space. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's lovely. Driveway it's lovely standing in on the driveway. It's yeah. really yeah. nice. I mean, like I said, I think there's a there's a little neighborhood like this in at the air station. We'll do another yeah. another yeah. elevation yeah. of Bedroom Street. The face is Bedroom Street. Um, and one other note with our chairman, no more on the board. Um, we do have, we are a bit of a stickler when it comes to non-native species on the landscaping. And we do right now, I think of Japanese maples, the ginkgo biloba, which isn't native. So if there's a way that we can swap in some native species, I think that's usually our rule of thumb. Okay. No yeah. Thank you. I, I, I did have a question. Uh, we actually, uh, Regarding the streetscape, I'm glad you're very much interested in that because I saw one thing that sold me when I was looking at the plan. Well, when I first looked at the plan, the first thing that grabbed my eye was the great, the great big looking trees on the street, the streetscape. If those trees actually would grow to maturity, that would look nice, other than you know scrub brush. But I think that is a is a really great way to address that part of the street because just the way it looks down. Um, so I, I I just hope. I'm glad that that's the focus for you. Now it goes along with the architectural comments. One thing you may notice is next door is there's, I don't know if you call it illegal that you'll get arrested, but there's an illegal, there's a light that's not next door to you that doesn't, shouldn't, should have been taken, never been put up. They put a big spotlight on the roof and it, it glares on your property. So you, you may want to take some oh, down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 it's, it's off. They, 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 got, yes. they got the sun lighting up that side of the house Eight. at nighttime. We do have the ability to talk with them because the owner of that property is the seller of this property. Ah. So thank you for that comment. We can pass it on. It's not coming from us. <laughs> um, one other concern I have in, in, uh, is uh, obviously there's some ledge that's going to need to come out. We try to avoid the ledge. Uh, I mean, that's something we talked about. Yeah. Uh, the ledge we've shown. There's one little, <coughs> there's one little section of exposed lead yeah. here that goes up right through this this area right here, and <laughs> part of the reason, we, the other reason we have the entrance road right here is to so we wouldn't bump into that. However, we went to ten feet on that hole of pure sand. So it's a very localized area. It's not a not a big area, uh, and and we went up the top of the hill and we just to to look to see up at, right there in that that location we dug another hole just to locate where the and it was down four feet. The lead was down four feet, and it was all broken up. So I, I don't know the history here, and I and I know that there's been an excavation uh, of a face of lead right there. So. There is a little bit of lead that goes through, like, like right in there. And this, they dug this, uh, Mr. Frazier personally dug that whole area out. I don't know what, they, what he used the fill for, but he told me he dug that area out right there. You want to know fill? So, so we'll have minimal excavation of, of ledge. Does that answer your question, Mr. Collins? And there, there wasn't, in all, all, all six holes, there was no ledge encountered. To, to 10 feet. Yeah, I, I think the, the the elevation of the ledge in your buildable areas of like 134, and I think you have to get down to 128. So there's, I mean, there's a, we're not talking thousands of cubic yards, but we're talking, yeah. there, there's no. some removal that needs to happen. Yeah. It'll, be a fa it'll be a sheer face, it yeah. sounds like, yeah. at some point. Yeah. Okay. I'd be interested just to make sure how we're going to maintain that if it needs any sort of stabilization or anything like that. Bob, did you have any comments?
We have some correspondence regarding this project. Uh, this is a letter what? to. Uh, Can I ask one more question? Oh, sure. Um, you saw the forward engineering comment on uh, snow relocation of the snow. Can you just yeah. get thoughts on that? So, presently, our proposal is the snow removal will be basically to the rear of the guest parking areas, which are the least likely used, especially if there's a blizzard coming. Our assumption is these people here aren't going to be in the castle. That being said, that was you know, the easiest place to put it was off these guest parking and also down here. That's you're, what the original plan was? This, that, what you have in front of you right now, and that's what that comment was based on. Yep. He's asking us to look at alternative yep. things, which I think will come to fruition as we work with the fire department about first what do we need to move from them, right. and then right. how does that relate to remove the guest parking to remove the snow. So we know it's on our list to, to address. We actually, our, one of our original drafts had the hydrant down at the, the dead end part of the driveway, and we thought it best to put it back at the, close to the entrance part where it would be easier. For the little I know about fire department operations, I'm learning, uh, it was better to move it there, and apparently they agreed to that, uh, at least in this part of the drawing. Um, same thing, we put the dumpster, so uh, the truck, we learned that they like to come in head first, and then they would be able to back out and leave head first out of the rig team. So there's a lot of moving parts, as the board's well aware. Um, so we will just continue to keep updating it. But um, uh, one of the earlier drafts, we actually had extra parking. We want to take out the, the forest, the wooded area that's out behind the residences. And we're trying to abandon that. Um, maintain that area, uh, and just try to make it all happen but I think we'll have a, uh, you know, a better, more detailed plan for you that we'll submit to you in August for your September meeting. Thanks, um, I, I'm very familiar with your work in other parts of the area, and, and my friends in Quincy speak very highly of what you do. Um, I have significant reservations about the way it's currently structured with the buildings on both sides, the concerns the fire department have, if you come back and the fire department says, you know what, it's all good, we did this out, it's it's not a concern, or it's reconfigured some way, then it'll be a different conversation. As it is structured right now, I just I have a lot of concerns. I have no intention to wrestle with the fire department or the engineering department or anyone here. This is just the yeah. beginning of the conversation. These comments yeah. are great for us to go back to the drawing board with. Yeah. I'm big on landscaping. I'm big on architecture. I, too, am going to be driving by this property for 40 years, and I want to be proud of it. I want it to be great. I'm not flying in from some other state trying to do a project and leave. Mm -hmm. I'm here, too. So I very much want uh, this to be the beginning <coughs> of a dialogue. And I think your comments have been super helpful okay. and, and very direct. So I, I thank you. Okay. Any other comments? OK, we have got some correspondence on this. Uh, this was from. Uh, John Stone, the director of the Abington Sewer Department. The Abington Sewer Department has reviewed your request for information regarding the planning board hearing schedule for, and has the following comments, 670, uh, 657 Bedford Street. This proposal located on assessor's plot 46, lot 20, must be approved by the Board of Sewer Commissioner at a regularly scheduled meeting. <coughs> and uh, we also got a letter from uh, Mary Ann Wong, uh, the Zoning Enforcement Agency. Uh, uh, good morning, Liz. We reviewed the packet and just had some general comments. An extremely tight lot to have three separate attached structures. The roadways seem tight for turns around the fire department, but I'm sure they will address their issues. Why is the proposed galley drainage system number one on page four located at the rear of the property instead of behind units four and five? Of all seven units proposed, being proposed as two bedroom, two and a half bedroom units. Has the water department been approached with this project for approval by the applicants? That's it. Overall, it's a big project for this lot. And of course, at the end of the uh, forward engineering letter of June 20, June 1st, a recommendation, the above comments in particular show those relating to the stormwater design access to Bedford Street. The fire department should be addressed prior to approval by the planning board since they may impact the overall design of the project. Yep, we have. No doubt about it, and as the board knows, we typically don't go to the water or sewer commissioners until we finalize the site plan. So we can show them the same thing we're, sh we're showing you, in that, or we're, either that we're close to approval or have got your approval. 
some of the comments from the building department aren't actually building department comments. They're kind of extraneous, but you know, we know we have to go to the water department. They mentioned water. We know we have to work on drainage. That's not really a building issue, but you know, we'll we'll address all that. Um, and she mentioned working with the fire department. Those basically what she mentioned is planning board jurisdiction. So no news to us. Well, it seems that uh, I can't vote on this tonight. Really, we could, but it would be. I think we should continue this. Yeah, and like I said, as much as I'd love to be back here in July, I just don't think physically because the the filing deadline is what Liz Friday. Uh, fr this Friday. So we don't, you know, we'd have to have this done in four days, three and a half days. I could bump you a week because of Fourth of July, but. Um, and I don't want to put that pressure on the fire department either because we'll right. probably have a couple of iterations. So. Um, I'm sorry to say this. Uh, we would like to ask you for you to continue this to the September meeting, and uh, we'll continue to work and come back with that. So the good news is our September meeting is the day after Labor Day this year. Okay. It's not a week later. So it's, and it's so it's a Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. And I go on vacation after that. <laughs> All right. So I'd like to make a motion to continue this to the uh, September meeting. Motion. Motion made. Second. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Right, guys. Thank you. And Thank Liz, you. I'll work with you if I get copies of uh, what was it, the sewer department letter. Any yeah. other letters? Um, yeah, I sent you Marion's and. Yep, got that. We're good. And Chiefs, yep. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And you guys should be able to work through the summer on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We've got professionals involved. Right. Liz. Do you sense we're going to be having a bunch of work coming down our way the next? Okay. No? Okay. No, I mean, I'll know more on Friday, but I haven't even had a phone call about it. All right. I'm open to always having an August meeting. Okay. If, if it's needed. I don't think it's unreasonable to, to do it, so. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there any other business that needs to come before the board tonight. It's the discussion on the master plan goals, mm -hmm. which is on the agenda. Um, Rick Shepard sent a worksheet, which I forwarded to everybody to take a look at. Um, I did go through and very quickly provided some updates, um, like on the number and the quality of active recreation areas and facilities, um, Beaverbrook Playground, Rick, that's, get, that's getting completely repaired, right? We I think renovated. the place that is like sitting in the DPW yard, it's yeah, just a it's matter there. of finalizing the conservation rules. Yep. Um, mm. And I've sent an email about potentially relocating the Central School playground and actually making it a playground instead of what actually exists, which is nothing. Yep. Um, and I think there's work on other stuff. I think it was C some CPA money. Anything coming to your brain real quick? <laughs> I know, I hate to hit you upside the head quick. For CPA? CPA money for playgrounds. Uh, you get a lot of money for playgrounds. Are you on CPA? No, I don't. I, I thought I read somewhere that we were doing another playground this year. Well, Should Woods, be. I mean, uh, the old ECC, that's... That's, that's being, being completely yeah. redone. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. I know they cleared the trees. And yeah. I mean, uh, honestly, the real need is some field updates. As a parent who sits on these fields right now, they're all terrible. Well, yeah. terrible is a I've said it worse, but they're all I was going to say, need. you weren't there when the high school was to the, the front and the back was a swamp. Uh, oh, I played there many years. Well, so me. did I. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, I sit up at Arnold, and trust me, that field needs a do-over. Yeah. And Laidler... It needs a complete do-over, and um, which they is apparently coming along. I'm sorry. I say which is probably coming along pretty nicely. I think. Yeah. Didn't they just do Woodsdale not too long ago? I thought we just approved the CPA money for July. So I don't mm -hmm. know how's so the work. So that's that's what I get. So it's Woodsdale, right? I I skimmed through it quick. Some work's happening now, but I thought we had approved some for right. the year to come, which hasn't arrived. Will yet. be July first. Yeah. No, my I think um, the money for the Exceder was the only stuff that was early. Okay. Which still work, I think, is largely complete. Is it? But I it might have been so. CPA money last year. Must be. I, yeah. And more maybe this year? I don't, I don't know. know. I think the group that uses it might have kind of fronted it a bit. 
Oh, okay. Just to get it done so they'll be ready for the summer season, which Maybe. I actually thought it took three growing seasons before it feels ready, but that's a whole other thing. Um, who, who takes care of the field? I mean, turning up the mound and setting and striping. It's supposed to be DPW, but um, Abington Little League pushes it along where they can. I think they hire some companies sometimes to come in and help as needed. Um, and then, you know, Memorial Field is a whole other thing. We need a whole new master plan for that property as well. And you're spearheading the Ames Dole master plan. So that was part of that. I, I was going to ask, does the board want the presentation that I gave basically to the board select, which is our draft plan? It's ready to be approved, basically. So if the board wants at the next meeting a quick update, I can give a quick update as to what the master plan is going to look like that we're going to be submitting to the state. I think that would be great. It's always a matter of conversation yeah, where we're going. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but there were a couple other notes here. Um, yeah, there's a lot here that I really would like to see done, like, you know, to have some sort of festivals in North Abington Center. I know it's hard to turn down. I don't know if we can shut down 139. There are ways to detour traffic, but I don't know how hard it is to sh say, no, we're going to shut down 139 from Adam Street to Railroad. Well, they can do it, but it, you fast. know, you're going to have to, that have to be advertised well in advance. Yeah. And, um, they'd have to reroute them. The, the problem with North Abington Center is the train. And it's the same reason we can't vote at the senior center because of the train. And if traffic gets backed up on either side and um, so that's that and if somebody gets hurt at a festival and they can't get and say there's something going on on the other side of town and Rockland can't get over because the train's coming through. Yeah. So I don't want to be a Debbie Downer on it. I'm no. just saying then part of the problem. I mean, then maybe it goes down railroad railroad Ave. But I mean, there's that is where you should have like a downtown festival. I, I don't disagree with yeah. you. We were trying to work on that for a winter one at one point. Um, there's stuff in here about Chestnut Street, and at the very least, you know, should we start making some offers to some of the landowners along Chestnut about zoning or what? What do you mean offers? Oh, uh, like buying the land through CPA oh. and making it as part of the town-owned land, making it part of the state forest or the state forest, but the the forest oh, that's yeah. in an area. I mean, the, the word is that the people who own Chestnut Glen don't want to sell, but at least we should, I think we should at least ask. Mm -hmm. And then there's another private landowner who owns a bunch of those properties right along Chestnut too. Um, again, it doesn't hurt to ask. I would hate to see Chestnut ever become a, a road like Route 18 or something. You know, yeah. Developed out. Yeah. Um, and then there's a lot of work really at some point to have a conversation about making it part of a larger tie-in with Holbrook, Weymouth, Braintree. I mean, that green strip goes all the way up to Route 3 and Braintree. I mean, it, it, it's pretty big. and goes all the way down south to Hobart Metal and, and Whitman. It's a pretty big area. Uh, oh, talked to Brockton about the Beaver Brook. There's one other... Oh, um... I want to coordinate with Liz about reaching out to uh, safe routes to schools, about getting an initial study about a path from the library out to, uh, is it Broadmeadow? Not Broadmeadow, it's uh, Broadmeadow? Buckwood, Broadmeadow, and Orchard. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, talking with parents, there's still a lot of kids who have to walk all the way around to Barry Road to cut behind the fields and then come in to the school. I mean, it's not just a dozen kids. It's it's significant, and they work really hard to make sure that the bridges are kept up so kids can cross the river. Uh, they just had a trash pickup because it gets really filled with trash. Um, there's a need for access to the back of this complex from Hancock Street. Yeah. And uh, looking through Safe Routes has two things. One, it creates that access for schools, um, considering this is now our center of our educational world. Um, but there also must be a tie-in because it also would provide easy access from those coming off the rail trail, coming across the street, coming through the cemetery, going up Lincoln Boulevard, which just received complete streets money, going through the complex down Glenwood's Way, and then you're almost right at Ames Knoll. Yep. And, and frankly, there's an entrance way to Ames Knoll you could put right there. It's right next to um, John L. Sullivan Way, which is a whole other question to have. Um, but there's a piece of... The park comes all the way out to Hancock to Street. To Hancock Street? Yeah. There's, okay. a, there's a little sliver that comes all the way out. 
you could put a trail right through there and you're right in there. So, I mean. Well, it depends on who lives on either side of yes. the pathway. But if it's okay, I'd like to work with you, Liz, about looking at the safe routes as sure. a grand opportunity yep. to do some initial planning. We used to use those trails all the time when we were young. Off of Hancock Street. Yeah. Yeah, through yeah. Brecky's, the back side of Brecky's property. It's funny that you bring up safe routes from school, Rick, because <coughs> that seems to be a continuing. I, I attend the uh, Old Colony Planning Council Joint Transportation Committee meetings, and safe routes to school seems to be a regular item, agenda item on that. Yeah. I can send you the link to those meetings if you're interested. I, I think it's an, the board to the link to I think it's an underutilized funding source. So um, I think it might be a great place to look. There's one other, it's on the watershed protection, it's action two, three. Nope, it's, uh, well, it's in that area anyway. Um, oh, action one, one. To include with our potential bylaw changes, uh, encouraging bioswales and rain gardens versus elevated green spaces. Right now, if someone has to do um, green spaces in a parking lot, it's, you know, they put curbs in, they fill it with soil, they put grass and soil on top of it and trees. But I think the new cool thing to do is actually make it more of a swale that filters into the ground. Um, Bridgewater State has a really great one out in back of their science building, Bruce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just thinking like when next time we have to do New England art or something like that, that uh, I think they had talked oh, about doing like a, a, a swale versus, you know, kind of building it up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you want so to reference I'd like, the issue on his chapel parking lot. Yeah, so I'd like to maybe add this to our list of um, make this the standard versus what we currently have, uh, which would check another box on our master plan. Yep. The other thing I was going to try to do is there's, um, I think July 1st, we can clean up the weeds at Island Grove. We're um, going to go out to bid on that, um, and that will take about a year because it's going to be permitted through DEP and CONCOM. Um, is this the water, cleaning the water? Yeah. Okay. There's the, I can't remember the technical name for what they are, but you're going to see them pretty soon. <laughs> They've done it to the state park. I think they did their third. Just to the third trade. And yeah. it's the same company that I have a report for Island Grove for. That would be awesome because the weeds are out of control. Yeah. Um, um, one other thing, and this would check two boxes, I think is could we ask the new superintendent at the Joint Waterworks to come and have a chat? Um, one about if there's any watershed protection uh, issues that we need to take a look at. I know other towns are really protective in terms of uh, putting really big restrictions on um, you know, tier one watersheds or whatever the, the term is. And I don't know if we've taken that sort of look. Uh, and the other was just they have a new report out. They have new regulations out. We haven't heard what it is. I'd love to hear what it is in terms of where the system capacity stands. Oh, okay. Um, plan to expand it or oh, we're not going to be able to and we have to figure out another way of when we're approving these projects on how we handle water. So I know some of her successors were not so eager to come talk to us, but maybe she would be willing to. Can I schedule her for like September? If it works. If, if that's convenient for her. Yeah. All right, and we have? If I, if I may. Uh, so there was nothing really magic about the, the what I put together. It was just pulling these, the things that you're going through right now, Rick dropping them into a spreadsheet and then putting an area on the side for what are we doing? No, I think it's or great. What, or what do we plan to do? Um, for a couple of reasons. I think there's, there's clearly things that are going on with other boards and committees in town that are contributing to completion of some of those things. And for my part, I don't necessarily know what all of those things are, so it would be helpful for me to kind of see you know, what's the group that's, that's addressing affordable housing or the center school or whatever. Because some of these things, I think, have correlations back to the master plan objectives. And then on a going forward basis, the Vicky say to kind of periodically look at 
to the extent that there may be some low hanging fruit on on their plan, then let's identify what it is and see if we can't push it forward a little bit. Um, so if if um, if you're going to be the keeper of that, mm. um, or I can, I mean, whatever works. Nope, that's fine. Yeah. Um, if there's if there's uh, something that's going on that, that contributes to an objective uh, within the master plan, then maybe we can get that onto the spreadsheet so that yep. when we're sitting here at some point in the future, we've got a, a pretty good scorecard of here's what we yep. wanted to do and here's what we did, or, the, or more broadly, here's what the town did. And it would be really helpful for other boards in town to be reminded that we have a master you plan bet. and uh, that it's a good starting point for when they do their work. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I was thinking that uh, it's nice that we brought this up. I, I think we should make it a, maybe a, uh, a monthly agenda item that we keep this thing to light. Because I'm looking at this yeah. thing, and so, some of the things are nice, the rest of it looks like, you know, unicorns and whatever. But it'd be nice if we can really uh, solidify this thing and make it work something. I think you're right, make everybody know let's all focus on the same thing. Some of these things are very broad and apparent, but. Yeah, uh, I think it's entirely possible that. This is from a couple of years ago, and, and the way it was kind of documented was the town might want to think about or look at, and um, you know, maybe in hindsight, a couple of years, we look at this and decide, you know what, this really is not feasible, yep. uh, um, not something that we want to pursue, and but we can document that as a conscious decision. Yep. That just we decided that this was really not something that, that made sense to pursue at this time. So we. Decided tonight with the master plan update to do a couple of action items. One was to, uh, you know, look at the redo and also look at the list of properties and things like that. And we've had, you know, good discussion on master plan polls. And I think this is going to be a monthly item on our agenda moving forward as people, you know, have thoughts on this. So. And if it's okay with you guys, then I will take this spreadsheet and send it out to Park and Rec, Open Space and Recreation, um, Affordable Housing, all those other yep. um, committees that would be contributing to this. And then, um, thought just went right out of my head. I was going to send an email to the zoning board um, and let them know that you guys are gonna start October on looking at potential zoning changes um, and if they have any ideas, they're invited to send them along or to come to a meeting or whatever. But to get that started in October, because I, we're still going to do town meeting in April again as, as of today. So we're, so we're doing in April, you said? Well, yeah, okay. he's going to try to keep to that to the charter schedule, um, which is great. But it means more work up front on the, on the back side. But no, of that, no yeah. fall special town meeting that you're mm -hmm. aware of. Okay. No. I think sending it out to the other town boards is a great idea, Liz. Okay. Uh, the one additional thing you might want to give some thought to is to try and direct the recipient to the specific area of the plan. Yep. Because if we just tell them to look at the plan and your eyes glaze over and roll right. back in your head is too much. Right. But if you can say, look at this these, part. This, this part is your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, some mm -hmm. of us find this stuff exciting. Well, I was a planner, professional planner for. <laughs> I find it exciting. Um, and just so you guys know, all right, so we have a discussion of amendments to multifamily zoning on here. Um, and I have not received a final draft from the state on that yet. So um, if you guys have anything you want on that. But then the other thing is the we, center school reuse group is um, going to give their report to the Board of Selectmen next week. So that'll oh. include. Um, the results of the survey and all of that stuff. You were uh, having some conversation with Senator Keenan's office, right? Rick? Yeah, I was hoping to get something in the state budget that maybe would look at that. And nothing. Nothing. It's, it happens. Um, the, the earlier word was that there was going to be some movements about some of that stuff. So it's there is going to be some changes. I don't know how significant, but... Which leads me to believe we may not get it this summer. Yeah, I, yeah, I would agree. But are we in pace so that when this does hit that we're able to get the technical help from Old Colony? What, so everybody's holding off on their technical assistance until, right. for the most part, until 
they're not draft regulations anymore. Yeah, but we're not going to be a you know foot draggers. We're going to be ready to go. No, we're ready okay. to go. Because I, I think we have good solutions if this is really what they want. I mean, I think we can handle it. Right. But No, and I have had that conversation with several people okay. about where to go. And so we're all set. Just we're looking for that. And then just the last thing I have for you guys is um, on July 1st, um, we'll get our CPA money. Thank you, Bruce. And we're not only going to clean the weeds, we're going to get a price on what it's going to cost to fix the bridge. Yes. And try to get that moving because the arch is done, but the bridge needs to be fixed. For real? For real? Memorial Bridge, yes. Mm. It's actually money to prepare. Not the Route 18 bridge down in Wayman. It's actually money to prepare a study for it, but not that. And hire a grant writer. Hire a grant writer, but I mean, oh. as far as the actual cost of the bridge. Right. But they're, they have a, yeah, they have, a, I don't know how, what you'd call it, but it's. It's a, study. a study, I guess, and that they're going to assign dollar amounts to it. So oh. it's going to cost about fifteen thousand dollars. I was going to say we've studied it so much we could write a right. book about it, but we don't know what anything costs. What the cost would be? Yeah. So it's going to cost fifteen grand, mm -hmm. roughly, to have the dollar amounts assigned. So we really don't know what it will cost. It's priority, on our priority number one. Priority number one. You can just check that right off. There you go. A um, couple other quick questions. <clears throat> The fire department, he reminded me that this has been kind of something in the back of my head. Like I said, there is at least one condo unit on Center Ave that is not the parking, the parking next to the units versus in the back. And I have, I would like to send a letter or have zoning send a letter or whatever the situation is, what would be the best way? Are you even allowed to talk about it when you put it as an agenda item? Um, I actually, when you said that, I thought about that. I'm not quite sure how we would go about it because it's private property. But it's blocking access to I, I would think that would be a, wouldn't it be a, phone, uh, a letter from either the building inspector or the fire department? But, but, it would, they, it but also they're not violating, you know what I mean? They're not, they're not violating well, any zoning. Well, aren't it, they because- It would because, be a public no, safety. Public safety, yeah. I have one seven for us, it'd be a okay. access. Yeah. Before. Only reason I thought maybe we have a role is because they, when they proposed a plan, right. this was not parking. This right. was driveway access. So right. they're not using the site as a, as permitted. But the person who permitted it doesn't live there. I, so, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. So once you once you permit something, something gets built and gets transferred, there's no, you know, they can start no, using it well, in violation of the but orders? The enforcement transfers to the fire department because it falls under their jurisdiction. Okay. Right, it doesn't it doesn't fall under us or zoning. And they have all the extra personnel to take it on. <laughs> okay. All right. I mean, um, I'd be happy to help you if you need it. But, um, I would also be interested in an update on the New England Art Building. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, have, I have very strong thoughts on that, as I'm sure. It will blow away eventually. I think you're going to need to take a ticket away. and well, step and I, in I, line I, on your thoughts on that, but go it ahead. It sounds like they're building out a unit a year. So, I mean, it's going to take a while to finish. They haven't um, even done that. Mr. Riley is smiling because he doesn't have anything to do with that. <laughs> I, I would also want an update on the Rourke project. That house? Oh, one on behind, up behind. Oh, behind the yeah, field. The field. Because that's now going on three years. Nothing's happening there now. Those two Maybe houses are going to build on the end of the so, track. All right. But I think that's, it looks like it's a dead project. I don't know. I'm just very curious. I'm writing everything down because if I don't. So this uh, is kind of a new business thing, <clears throat> sort of. I guess we're talking here. I was one. We when we did the um, Zoom meetings, it was horrible as a committee. But what what I liked about it was that the viewers could watch from home and wait, maybe type their questions in. But I was one, I know there's you need a person to do that. But I just wondered if there's any interest in bringing that back and making use of these. TVs that probably don't even work. So these don't work. Yeah, that was a um, they're, I think they're looking to upgrade the room Yeah. yeah. Um, over the summer. Um, and that may make a hybrid thing more possible. That Because um, you can't quite connect with that. Because I know that's an independent right. thing. Yeah. Um, well, I don't, and I, Sean's like volunteered to man up the computer while we're here. Oh. He's going to answer the question. I think you have open meeting law issues to deal with. With hybrid. Yeah. 
people who are here and not here. There may be a way to do it. I don't know. Well, there still is now. Yeah. The governor has extended all of that. Right. That was allowed by staff. Oh, right. Because during that temporary thing. Um, and it's still I allowed, just like the right. idea that, I mean, people seem to have a lot to say, but they're watching old they're movies of us. But I like that, well, people just can't get out. I mean, they just can't, I mean, they just get kids or whatever. There's no doubt about it that, that remote Zoom access benefits a certain segment of the population. There's also a lack of control over who really is Zooming into your Abington Planning Board meeting. It could be someone from anywhere, oh. not necessarily an Abington resident. So, it's, you know, the, there's danger to it also, or at least a lack of control. Um, it's also sometimes you know, difficult, you know, for the proponent, the applicant, even the board members who are talking to live people with plans and then people are away. Maybe there's a way to do it, but that's what I think a lot of people are trying to think how to do it. Yeah. Um, even some towns are talking at a town meeting level about it, and that's almost, well, you can't do it with open town meeting. It's impossible. Representative town meetings are looking at it a little differently. But, you know, I just, it's not an easy answer, but. Um, no, I just love to see something happen. I mean, I get when I hear conversation. We're in a small town where yeah. nothing happens, nothing any, you know, other than a fair or something like that. But uh, it's like I don't know what society. Everybody's a conspiracy person, and because they can't hear what's going on, they go. They think this board's doing this, and that board's doing that. And it's really weird. I would I like, like to give a some... shout out to Abington Cam for the amount of meetings that they um, tape and put on the internet on YouTube, so people can watch your meetings even if they're not home tonight and couldn't be here, they can watch it at their leisure for, you know, anytime um, for the next several years, really. So that's been a benefit to keep people updated who want to get the information. And a lot of links to the town website is now very much enhanced. That's great. I find a frustration, and I think, I know the board probably does too, that in this age of technology, it's almost more difficult to notify people and get some feedback because back in the day, everybody got the Brockton Enterprise or the Patriot Ledger, and you set your notice, and everybody, that's how you heard about it, and there was a lot of local newspaper. Thank God for our local reporter that there is some local reporting being done. Um, but otherwise, some people are only on Facebook, some are on Twitter, some are on Instagram, some don't do any of it, and how do you, you, you can't you get, them, reach everybody. get them involved. I, I don't know. I mean, we get an empty place. I don't know how many times we have important things and no one shows up. And it's like, Jesus, Bill Brick going right next door. And then they get and upset about it. But I yeah, think, it's like, kind of to what Rick said earlier, Rick, Rick Shepard, I think we get the word out to tell people where to get the right information. You know, go to Abington Cam and watch our meetings, or go to the town website for accurate information. Don't listen to someone's or email me on Facebook. Right? Um, because might not if be it, accurate. Because yeah. if it's, I can forward an email to you guys, or I can maybe answer the question, yeah, actually, or direct it if it needs to go someplace else. Well, you, I think you kind of hit it a little bit, Sean, where people like options now. And, and one of the great things about when every meeting was on Zoom was like I could watch every meeting no matter where I was. Right. Like if I was driving the car, I could have it on through coming through my car stereo. I could, if I'm at a Little League game, I could sit there and listen to a meeting while watching my son play. You know, there's yeah. there was a lot of different ways that I could keep track of these things. And Abcam is fantastic because I can always pull something up. But while it's happening, I also would want to watch it. And just, you can't do a lot of live meetings. So it would be nice, because I know a lot of other states have more ability to do, you know, they broadcast their city council meeting live, and people can email in questions, and someone's there to monitor and guide them. And I know that's a whole other thing, too. For, for work, we have a system where it's Zoom, um, and you can submit questions through it, and then there's a moderator there to ask them, and they, they know who's asking questions. Uh, that way it doesn't get too crazy. But um, I would like to figure out a way to do that, because I think it's just it's helpful to give people options. Good luck. Any other discussion? Uh, just a couple of other brief things. Um, I know Liz, you had sent out the email to us saying about, about the work that was being done up on John L. Sullivan Way and that you had sent a letter to somebody asking for additional information. Did yes. Get anything back? So conservation and the environmental police visited the site <coughs> And I believe the environmental police were going to um, find them or review the situation and potentially find them. And I know conservation um, has an enforcement order on them. Yeah, nothing for us. Nothing for us. They didn't disturb an acre of land or anything, so. Okay. 
um, last meeting we uh, approved 678 Adams contingent upon resolution of some of the road engineering items. Did we get any additional information on what's been done there? So yes. Um, Dave reviewed the revised plans and approved them. They were they can they included everything from all of his letters. Um, the special permit letter, I'm still waiting for something from him saying he has um, done all the items in the special permit letter. I did get the surety and I did get revised plans that I can send to the building department. Um, I had emailed Mr. Nashawadi and he didn't respond to me and then I was on vacation and he emailed me while I was out on vacation. So I emailed him when I came back and he was on vacation. So he said he's coming in tomorrow. I told him I needed the response to the special permit stuff and I need a building permit application that I can have a board member sign. Mm -hmm. So when I get that, I will call Bob or to have him come up and sign it, but I haven't had the application. But as far as I know, everything, he's done everything except the special permit stuff right now. Okay. And he said he will have that, so. Okay, excellent. Yeah. And then have we heard anything on um, Southfield redevelopment? Nothing. So I seem to recall that Brookfield was coming back with a plan this summer. But I've um, never heard a time frame or... Um, no, and our representative to that changed. And I'm not sure who the new one is. Roger Woods. Is it Roger Woods? Um, uh, Kevin's stepping down in August, I think. That way, is it August? Yeah, it was so that he can give kind of Kev, uh, Roger kind of a, some running room. Transition period, yeah. okay. Um, I can send an email to the town manager and ask him if he has any information. If we, yeah, I mean, okay. right now... If we, any information is more than we've got, I think. And would it make sense to ask either Kevin or Roger to visit at some point just to kind of bring us up to speed on what, um, what's I don't, happening? I don't think Roger has the information right now. Right. Um, well, let me ask the town manager first. Yeah, okay. Well, indirectly to Southfield, but more directly to Route 18. At the last old colony planning council joint transportation committee meeting i asked about that second bridge now that's in district six as opposed to district five which is what abington is in after but they are going to reach out and they are going to ask when that second bridge is going to open so that would be really good to have that bridge open hmm. and if i find out i'll let you guys know the Route 18 bridge. Route 18 bridge over the train tracks. The new one. Well, that's under construction. It's yeah. done. <laughs> it's just a matter of getting it connected. It's, it's traffic road. coming right now. Yeah. <laughs> Except for if you have to turn into the South Coastal Vet, which I've had to do several times. Uh oh. Well, well, the weeks. They're as busy as the hospital. Yeah. yeah. That place. It's busy place. All right. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you for having inquired the department for attending.